Welcome to Running Wild, where every episode is a quest to uncover the wonders of our planet's wildlife. As humanity faces its greatest challenge, with the specter of the sixth mass extinction looming, one unemployed zoologist has embarked on a mission. I've actually never seen one before in the wild, and it's absolutely massive. I'm Raja Osama, and I'm on a race against time to document the incredible creatures that share our world. Sleep in my bed, and Lali and Loki were both trying to wake me up, and I, I, you know they were being completely chaotic, and way more than usual. Um, and I, I thought maybe Lali just wanted to go outside because the weather was nice, but uh, apparently it was <laughs> something a lot crazier. So my dad calls me up, and he's like, "Come downstairs. There's a, a huge bear that's been injured or something." So I grab my camera and I go out to the back and. Uh, there's this black kite and I'm pretty sure it sustained uh, a wing injury so I threw a sheet over it and grabbed it put it in this basket here and as you can see he's chilling in there and you can't really see this was the little guy that had everyone freaking out this morning Lali was absolutely determined to wake me up he was meowing and even bit me a few times to get me out of bed. This wasn't all that unusual, but the intensity of his behavior had me questioning what his damn problem was. He wasn't the only one. The outside stray cats I feed were yowling in the side yard, but I was honestly so exhausted that I couldn't care less. I needed my sleep. But then I got a call from my dad and he asked me to come down because something big was in the side yard. So I grabbed my camera and ran down to the side yard only to find the stray cats screaming at an injured black kite. Black kites occasionally kill and eat stray cats with their insanely strong talons and their sharp beak. So everyone's reactions started to make sense. At that point my zoologist brain took a logical leap and assumed one of two things had happened. Either it was trying to hunt the cats and got injured somehow, or it was injured in last night's storm. Now I've worked at the wildlife center in Corvallis for a long time so I knew exactly what to do next, but unfortunately I don't have any of my gear in Pakistan so I had to be extra careful not to get stabbed by those talons. So I've just woken up, my dad gave me a call and there was a, an injured black kite outside and uh, I've just got it in this basket here and we're going to take it to the wildlife center. I haven't even washed my face. <laughs> That's his face on that side. I've never rescued anything I couldn't rehabilitate myself in Pakistan. I didn't even know that there was a wildlife rehabilitation center here. Surprisingly, my dad's friend had to rescue a kite that got hit by a power line just a few days ago, so my dad knew exactly where to go. We're outside Islamabad Wildlife Management Board and we're trying to get a hold of someone um, who can help us with the rehabilitation and get them on side of that. So I used to work at the wildlife center in uh, Corvallis back in Oregon and I mean I'm used to you know, rescuing animals like this that was my favorite part of the job and then the second part of it was uh, we'd take it to the in-house vet they'd give it a once over give it an x-ray make sure you know they've got their flus and everything and uh, they'd know what they needed to do to you know bring it back to health nurse it back and then I'd have to kind of like customize the uh, enclosures that we had for that specific species. If there's a wing injury or something, it needs a splint or you know whatever. Uh, we just like let the vet do their job and then take it to that enclosure, and then you know we would periodically check on it until it was well enough, and I'd have to go feed him mice and stuff. So there he is. Man's coming. Oh, nice, you've got the gloves. 
<laughs> मैं इसीलिए इसको चेक नहीं करना चाहता इसके पार बिल्कुल कटे हुए और बाकी ये सही है तकरीबन अच्छा ठीक है इसको कोई मसला नहीं है ये किसी ने काटे हैं या ये ये बिल्कुल ये किसी ने मेरे ख्याल में ये देखे ना ये सारे कटे हुए हैं ये जोड़ने वाले हैं इसके पंख वो सारे कटे हुए हैं कोई मुझे समझ नहीं आ रही थी मैं नींद नींद में जागा मुझे लगा वेंग इंजरी हुई होगी रात को इसको गए स्टॉम में नहीं नहीं सर ये बेहतर हो जाएगी इनशाला इसको कोई मसला नहीं So, crazy morning, right? What's crazier is that it wasn't injured during a hunt or in the storm. Some despicable little piece of shit captured that bird, tortured it, and cut off its remiges or flight feathers, probably in an attempt to keep it from flying away and keep it as a pet or something. Welcome to the Manafik Republic of Pakistan. I'm your host, Rajo Sama, a zoologist and a photographer. Welcome back to Running Wild, where we dive deep into the captivating world of wildlife. Today, we're exploring a remarkable avian species, albeit. quite common in urban areas The black kite has a distinctive forked tail and a wingspan of up to 150 cm. It's known for its impressive aerial prowess, often seen gliding effortlessly on thermal currents. I'm on my roof right now getting some shots of black kites. You're probably wondering why I'm on a roof and not in a jungle. Well, that's because black kites have adapted to the city life. They are usually found in cities and towns where they can find easy meals. Tall buildings, radio towers, and water tanks make for good nests. So why spend your energy making your nest in a tree when humans have done half the job for you? Black kites are primarily scavengers, but they're also skilled hunters using their keen eyesight to spot potential prey from high above before swooping down with remarkable speed and precision. When at rest, black kites often adopt a relaxed posture with wings slightly spread and head tucked under their feathers for warmth and protection. Black kites breed in more tropical regions and often remain in the same area year-round if resources remain abundant. They have a ritualized aerial courtship which consists of extremely loud calls to one another and grunting. Ritual courtship behavior typically begins in March. I've actually seen it on the way to Asr prayer at the mosque, but I didn't have my camera or my phone to show you. Uh, they had landed on top of a radio tower and got it on. Don't do it. You can actually see the radio tower back there. Don't worry, I checked. It's halal if birds do it. Black kites play an essential role as efficient scavengers within their ecosystems. They scavenge roadkills, which may help to reduce the spread of disease. They prey upon many crop-destroying pests, and due to the ingestion of rodenticide, illegal poisoning, and changes in agricultural practices, black kites have been in decline for a while. But now they're chilling. Black kites are classified as least concern on the IUCN red list, and their numbers today are stable. These guys are almost as adaptable as crows, so they'll probably be one of the species to survive the current mass extinction event we're experiencing. They seem to be living by the bear girl's code: improvise, adapt, and overcome. As we wrap up our exploration of these fascinating avian species, remember to appreciate the vital roles they play in our ecosystems. Join me next time as we continue our journey through the wild wonders of the world. Until then, stay curious and keep running wild.
Sounds corny as shit, man. I need a better catchphrase.